Well, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Bishop Ronnie Crudup, uh, senior pastor here at New Horizon Church International here in Jackson, Mississippi, welcoming you to another wow, wow, wow Wednesday. Glory to God. It's good to be here. It's, it's a blessing to be here. And I appreciate each and every one of you uh, tuning in. Listen, I've got an absolutely fabulous uh, word for you uh, on this night. And so I can tell you, listen, you want all your friends, family, everybody to hear this word, okay? We're going to talk about end times on tonight. So go on and start liking and sharing. You know, you know what we do. Go on and like and share, okay? And let's get a whole lot of people in here because I've absolutely got a tremendous and, and wonderful word for you. And so go and make sure all of your friends and family and others get in on this uh, good word so uh, you can know uh, the truth. And as the scripture says, the truth will both make and set you free. Uh, let me take this opportunity just to appreciate every person out there, certainly, and and uh, let all of New Horizon out there know, mm, love you in the Lord. Thank God for every one of you. And friends of New Horizon, mm, you too. Hey, love you too. Folk from all over the world who watch us, we just appreciate you so much. Can't say enough about that. And uh, just to be in this wonderful fellowship with you. And this is one of these great things that we can even thank God that in his wisdom, in the midst of the pandemic made all of this possible because before all of this, we wouldn't have been together, okay? And so uh, God works these marvelous things that work out together for all of our good, okay? And so just uh, just glad to be here and be a part of it. So once again, go on and like and share. And we're going to prepare to get into uh, this word tonight. And you're going to be blessed by everything that's going to take place. Now, we got some great singing coming up, too. OK, so, hey, you don't want to miss any of this. But let me just say uh, uh, a, a word of prayer, an invocation for our time. Father, in the wonderful and strong name of Jesus, thank you so much for this Wednesday night, this midweek service time, this this wow, this opportunity to share the word and uh, worship with uh, with the people of God. Thank you so much for everybody out there. You know where they are, you know what their needs are, and I pray that you'll not only bless them, but bless our time together, that it will be, mm -mm, yeah, it's gonna be really good. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Well, take advantage of this time once again to like and share. Uh, take care of that, and, uh, and you know, so we can get a lot more people in here. Now, there are a lot of announcements, too. You're going to see that if you didn't get a chance to see them up front. You'll see them again at the end. And we want you to take advantage of all these good things that are happening here at New Horizon. Uh, we are back in person. And, you know, I mean, there are a lot of churches that are not. We're back in person here for 8 and 11 o'clock service, as well as our ranking campus is uh, open as well at 1030. And so uh, uh, we got all these good things going, all of these events and other things that are coming on and going on. Just had some huge, just the other day, a great health care uh, event that was going on. And so, uh, you know, that's a good example of that as well. So just a lot of things that are happening. And we want to make sure that uh, you get in on these good things. But the announcements will be, will be there. And so please watch the announcements and be a part of that. I also want to give you the wonderful opportunity to be able to give. And uh, so we thank God for uh, people that uh, partner with us, okay? Uh, because you like what you're seeing, you like what, you, what you're hearing. This word speaks to you, the ministry that we're doing. And so we appreciate you sharing your tithes and your offerings with us. And if you've not done that, then I would ask you to uh, partner with us, okay? and uh, be a part of this and help us bless the world because we do ministry not just here in Jackson, Mississippi, but literally all over the world, okay? And so when you give to us, I can tell you, you help uh, in Africa, you help in Haiti, you know, you help uh, in India, you help, you know, in Pakistan, you just help all over the world, okay? And certainly we're, gonna, we're doing some things too in Ukraine and, and those areas as well. And so, uh, when you share with us, you really do touch the world. So uh, be mindful of that as well, okay? And so, um, uh, listen, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're going to get ready. You're going to be 
uh, blessed in a moment by a wonderful, wonderful song that's going to touch you in a tremendous way. Uh, but before that, I want to give you uh, one of the things that we do on Wednesday night is we have a, a question, okay, that is a part of the message. And since we're going to be talking about end times, then I've got a question for you uh, that uh, uh, kind of get things started here. And uh, the question is this, what year did the Bible or what year did Jesus say? What year did some Bible character say the end would come? What year did Jesus or, or some biblical character uh, prophesy uh, the end would come? Uh, is there a particular year that, uh, that the end will come? Uh, has that been prophesied? Um, and so that's the question. Is there a date, a year, a day that uh, the end is going to come? What does the Bible have to say about that? That's the question. Once again, what date, what time, what year does the Bible say the end is going to come? And so that's our question for tonight. So, hey. Get your answer ready, okay? And in the message, I'll answer that question and uh, we'll see if we're on the same page, okay? Now, let's do this. Uh, you're going to be blessed by a, a wonderful song. Uh, so prepare your hearts for this and uh, receive in Jesus' name.
Oh, glory to God. Listen, I know you were blessed by that. Ooh, that was good. That was good. Well, listen, I want to pray. <clears throat> Just in the midst of everything that's going on, I want to pray because one of the things that we, the people of God, can do is we can pray. I love this statement. We don't pray because we can't do anything else. We pray because we know what prayer will do. Father, in the wonderful and the strong name of Jesus, Lord, thank you so much for this privilege and this power that is manifest in prayer. And so, God, we come today thanking you for your goodness and mercy to all of us that uh, uh, we live where we live, that, uh, uh, that our problems are pale in comparison to people who have the problems that they have in other places in the world, certainly in, in, uh, in Ukraine and places like that, but a whole lot of other places. And so, God, you have been extremely good to us and God, we want to praise your name. No longer will we take for granted, God, just the great and wonderful things that uh, you do for us, how you take care of us, you open doors for us. You just bless us real, real good. And so we thank you for that. God, we do come and, and we lift up all of those who are sick and, and shut in on our prayer list and others and just pray your wonderful and awesome touch upon every one of them. Thank you for what you are doing in the people of God's life, God. And I praise you. I, I thank you, God, that, uh, that, that COVID is slowing way down. We're not going to say that it's gone. It's not. But it's slowing way down. We thank you for that decrease and that we're getting an opportunity to, uh, uh, to experience uh, some of what we did before all of this. And so thank you that we can see a time when... Uh, uh, we don't have to wear all the masks that we wear. We don't have to do this and that. And so we praise you for all of that coming. Make us wise so we can know uh, exactly when. And we thank you for our healthcare professionals and all of these people who've been such uh, heroes and heroines uh, over this pandemic period. And so we praise you for that. God, we lift up uh, the Ukraine and the war that is going on there between Ukraine and Russia. And God, we just pray for Ukraine. We, we pray for the survival of, uh, of that nation and those people. And so, God, I just pray that you would give them extraordinary help, that things that Russia is trying to do would not work. And so, God, supernaturally, just show your hand mighty in the midst of that circumstance. Save life. And God, uh, uh, help those Ukrainians, God, as they seek to defend themselves. We pray. Lord, that you would put hooks in Putin's mouth and you will pull him and his troops back, God, that they will not be able to accomplish what they want to accomplish. And so, God, uh, uh, once again, speak to Putin's heart uh, and turn him, God, uh, a different way. And so, God, I thank you that you're going to do uh, something in the midst of this, something strong and something powerful. And thank you that we can pray for this. I, I pray for the sanctions and all these things that are occurring is that they will work. And so that God, uh, uh, once again, uh, this war will cease, God, and life will be saved, God. And so just show your hand strong and mighty in that. Thank you for all of the various groups and aids uh, uh, groups and nations that are that are coming to assist. We just we, we praise you for all of that, God, as uh, we can be on one accord. That uh, that once again, this kind of aggression, war, is not what anybody needs. And so, God, just to show your hand strong and mighty in that. And Lord, now uh, once again, speak to my heart as I prepare to share this word about the end times with your people so that even more we will have direction. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Woo. Glory to God. Wow. Wow. That's what it is. It's a wow. Well, listen, uh, the title of the message is, Do You Know What Time It Is? Do You Know What Time It Is? Now, we're talking about end times, and I want to call your attention uh, to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And um, uh, the Lord really just kind of put a burden on my heart to share this word uh, on a Wednesday night uh, with the people of God, because with 
the war that is going on in Ukraine and, and, and all the speculation around that, uh, all the fear uh, that is happening around all of that, uh, all of the uh, uh, people, you know, religious figures who are saying this and that related to all of this, then I just decided, you know what? And the Spirit of God says, yes, weigh into this conversation because uh, I, I want to make sure that, uh, that, you know, first, you don't end up in fear, okay? Because there's a real, real, um, uh, uh, you know, chance, likelihood, uh, no doubt, there are a lot of people who are going to end up very, very paranoid over all that they're seeing. Fear is going to grip a lot of people's hearts. And I don't want that to be you. And when you don't really know what the scripture says, uh, because remember, you can't, you can't take everything that you hear just because you saw it on, quote, Christian television or, or from uh, some church or some person who's supposed to be whatever. Uh, you, you can't take everything, okay? Uh, and you can't receive everything that you hear all of these people saying. Uh, because uh, uh, sadly, uh, you know, th there are a lot of these other presuppositions that are there that you got to be careful where these folks are coming from, okay? And so, uh, you know, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set or make you free. But that also implies that if you uh, have a lie, okay? And, and what I understand is there are a lot of folk who are sharing things that, is not true that's a lie and they're not doing it maliciously they just don't know that they're in error and so uh, it's critically important that you judge everything that you hear when it comes to these things whether it's from me or anybody else you can't just take it because supposedly they're a big name because they got some title you know, because whoever says whatever. No, you need to judge everything. You know, one of the things that the scripture says, it talked about the Bereans and said that they were more honorable than others because uh, they would uh, take the scripture and go back and see if it was so, okay? And so in the same way, that is what you and I have to do. We need to judge what we see and what has been said uh, and uh, by the scriptures themselves. And so you can know, is this something that I need to follow? Yeah, is this something that I need to follow? And so the title of the message tonight is, Do You Know What Time It Is? Do you know what time it is? Now, the, the passage is good, and we're coming out of, uh, out of Matthew chapter 24, glory to God, and uh, verse 3 and following. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 and following. And uh, what Jesus is speaking to what would happen at the end of the age or end times. Now, no doubt we are in the end times. Okay? No doubt about that. And, and, and you should use that word. We are in the end times. But just because we're in the end times doesn't necessarily mean that time is going to end next week. Say that again. Just because we're in the end times doesn't mean that time is going to end next year or five years from now or 10 years from now. Can I say this to you? A hundred years from now. And so just because we're in the end times doesn't mean that time is going to end anywhere in the near future, a foreseeable future or in the lifetime of your children. Because remember, God's time and our time is totally different. Because for God, you know, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And so when you look at that, then one of the things you find out is that Jesus hadn't even been gone, okay? In God's scale of days, he hadn't been gone three days. And so, um, and so we need to be, be, be thoughtful about that, that though we can kind of look at the season and things that's happening, looking at scripture and say, yeah, we're kind of in the end times. Remember, just because it's the end times does not mean 
that everything is going to end soon. Do you get it? You got it. Okay. You got that. Now, listen what, uh, listen to what the scripture says in, um, in Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse number three. It says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Two great questions. What would be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Because we're quick to say, hey, Jesus is coming back. We absolutely believe that Jesus is coming back. We just don't know when. Okay. Verse four. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceive you. Why am I sharing this word tonight? So that no one will deceive you. So that you are deception proof, if you will. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Wow. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And so that will be people who will come on the scene who will literally say, I'm Jesus, I'm the Christ. All right. And uh, they will show some signs. And what will they do? They will deceive many. Verse six, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not what? Troubled. Grab that. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Wow. 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 But the end is what? Not yet. Verse seven, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All of these are what? The beginning of sorrows. So when you hear wars and rumors of wars, understand that the end is not yet. What? Understand. And all that getting, get a what? Get an understanding that the end is not yet. My God, my God. Now, um, the question, the diagnostic question that, uh, uh, that I gave you was, uh, what day did Jesus say the end would come or some biblical figure would say the end would come? Well, the answer to that question is, Jesus didn't say when the end would come, nor did Paul or Peter or any of the apostles, uh, nor any other biblical figure say exactly when the end would come. In fact, what the Bible says, no man knows the day nor the hour. Now, the scripture says, no man knows the day nor the hour. Acts chapter 1, verse number uh, 6 and 7 says this. In fact, it's not for you to know the day nor the hour. So scripture says not only does no one knows the day or the hour, Acts 1 says it's not even for you to know the day nor the hour. And so he's saying don't even get into the speculation of exactly what day or an hour. Now, there's some folks that's, that's on Christian television out there, and I've been seeing these folks for over 20 years, and it is amazing to me that these folks have, quote, prophesied, it's really prophet lying, okay? They prophesied that the end was gonna come this time, that time. I, I know it's been three or four different occasions that I've heard them supposedly uh, figure out, you know, they'll take their charts and other things like this. And so they prayed over this. And this is the day when the end is going to come. Nobody knows. And here's what you know. Anytime you hear somebody say something's going to happen an exact day and time, run. Get away from them. Okay? Anytime somebody tells you it's going to be an exact day, time, on this day, that, that, what do you do? Run away from those folks. Because we don't know the day nor the hour. Scripture says not even forced to know. 
The only thing we need to do is be ready, all right, whenever he comes. Jesus said, be ye therefore ready uh, so that whenever that day happens, guess what? You're ready, okay? And so live in a perpetual readiness so that whenever it comes, you're in a good place, okay? Get your life right with Jesus. So if your life is right with Jesus in a nice way, it really doesn't matter when he comes. Now, let me speak to this. Particularly what's happening in the Ukraine. One of the things that the circumstance in the Ukraine really says, and the Lord said to share this with you is, it really speaks to the fact that somewhere in the future, and I would say somewhere in probably you know, the next 50 years or so, somewhere between here and 50 years out, we're going to probably have a, a world war. Um, and I, I know that's not good news, but I think when you look at everything that is happening today, uh, you can look at Ukraine and see how things are lining up, then it does tell you some things. It tells you that... Uh, that we still live in a very dangerous world and that there are people out there who care very little about other people's lives and property. Uh, uh, they want what they want, they're ambitious, and, uh, and, and that's what you can see about Putin. Um, and they will bring about mass destruction to achieve their desired goal. And, um, and so I think when you look at Russia, and I'm going to include this too, when you look at China, then it really speaks to the fact that somewhere along the way, that's probably we're going to be engaged, United States and others, we're going to be engaged in a world war. And I believe watching what is happening now in Ukraine, that the war there is going to widen and that NATO is not going to be able to uh, just sit on the sidelines and just be a supplier of weapons somewhere along the way uh, in this, then uh, the reality is uh, uh, we're, we're going to end up, United States particularly, is going to end up more involved uh, in that war that, you know, we're going to go from just being a supplier of weapons to doing some literal fighting. Now, that can happen a number of different ways. It may happen because, uh, you know, the Russians, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, uh, bomb uh, something in Poland or one of the other uh, NATO countries that then escalates this war. It could happen because uh, the Russians use chemical weapons, which they have in the past. Uh, in the United States, that's in, uh, decide that's intolerable and can't allow it to, to occur. Or some other occasions are this one, which is even worse, is that because of the bombing, so much blood is shed, so much destruction is caused that the United States and the NATO allies just decided they can't, they can't stand it any longer. The level of bloodshed that the Russians are willing to inflict upon uh, civilians, the, the civilian folks that's out there. And because Putin has shown that he's using a scorched earth policy and he doesn't care. Um, and in a nice way, you need to understand that he feels like, you know, at this point, he's got everything to gain and, and nothing to lose because he understands that uh, he's gonna, if he doesn't win this deal, he loses. Uh, he loses big time. Uh, Russia loses big time. And so, you know, his sheer survival, uh, once again, depends upon him in some kind of way winning the day, which I don't think he is. But uh, that is the case that he has set himself into. And so, You've got a dangerous person who understands that, you know, uh, him being overthrown, him being um, assassinated, all of these things are, are on the table because of, uh, of this war. And now his country is, uh, with all of these sanctions, is 
going to be hurt for tremendously for years to come. And so, uh, and so he set himself up in a bad circumstance. And that kind of person, honestly, uh, and his track record shows he's willing to do anything. And so I think that somewhere along the way, this, this thing is going to escalate. And, uh, and we'll not just be watching uh, a war that's on CNN and going about our business and all of these other things like it doesn't touch us, or as my grandchildren say, well, that ain't here. That's over there. Um, but it affects us too. Come on. I mean, the reason that we've got gas prices the way that we've got them, a lot of these shortages and other things like that is tied to the war, and that will continue. Uh, and so, uh, once again, more than likely, this thing is not going to be over in the next few weeks, okay? Uh, so we can go about doing all the other things, you know, uh, that we've got planned. It's going to go on a while. And uh, sooner or later, you're going to have Americans that's uh, engaged in fighting. Uh, and some of those can be your relatives and my relatives, certainly, you know, fellow Americans and, and folks of NATO. And so... And so we need to get ourselves prepared for war. That's right. We need to get ourselves prepared for war. There's a certain psyche mentality that you need to take uh, because you just understand what time it is, okay? That we are at a very, very dangerous period um, and that you need to get yourself ready for this. Now, let, let me say to you, before I tell you what you need to do to get yourself ready, let me tell you what you don't need to do. Uh, you don't need to fall into fear. Uh, you don't need to become paranoid. Uh, you don't need to get into a place where you can't sleep at night because you're afraid you know, a nuclear weapon is going to go off and all of these things like that. You don't need to get to the place where you cease to do the things that you need to do daily from taking care of yourself to going to work to all of these things like that. You know what I mean? Because you say, well, the world is coming. You know, the world is going to going to be destroyed and and, you know, by the end of the year. So if it's going to be destroyed by the end of the year, I don't need to go to work. I don't need to do this and that. Don't go there, okay? Don't do that. Uh, that's not what you need to do, okay? Don't disable yourself because of the fear and other things that you're hearing. That's why the scripture says God has not given us a spirit of timidity. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. And the reality is, the people of God, we are called for such a time as this. That's right. Uh, our faith in Jesus Christ is made for such a time as this. And the reality is, as a Christian, you need to allow the Spirit of God to rise up in you in the midst of circumstances and times like this. And so... We're not to respond in fear. Uh, we're not to become paranoid. We're not supposed to stop our, our life and our daily routines. We're not supposed to start fear mongering, okay? Or uh, listening to a whole lot of folks, and this is a good one. I uh, start listening to a whole lot of preachers and other talking heads who are a bunch of fear mongers because all they talk about is death and destruction and what's gonna happen and you know, you need to stop this and you need to go do this and that. Uh, don't listen to these fear mongers who are bringing a spirit of fear upon you. And I wanna say to you, a whole lot of these folks out here who are gonna pull a whole bunch of charts out and other stuff like that, and they're gonna tell you with this this week and this and all these kind of things, you need to particularly uh, be careful of a lot of these folks, okay? Um, because that's what Jesus is saying. For uh, uh, once again, you're going to hear of war and rumors of war. See that you are not what? Troubled. Uh, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. What is Jesus saying? If God be for you, you don't have to be troubled because he's going to take care of you. Even in circumstances like this, that's right. 
If God is for you, he's going to take care of you, even in circumstances like this. I was on a prayer call this morning and, and one of the brothers was giving a report about uh, the church in Ukraine and the believers in Ukraine. Because even in the midst of that, there are people who love Jesus who are in that nation. And, and though they're put in a real precarious place, it's a tough circumstance to be. Yet God is moving. God is showing his hand. God is taking care of his people. And you know what he's going to do for you? He's going to take care of you too. If not a sparrow falls without his approval, if the very hair on your head is numbered, then listen, he's going to take care of you. Okay? Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, then all these other things will be added to you. That's right. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things other things will be added to you. So don't respond in fear. Don't stop your life. All the things that you've already got planned, these other things, go on and do them. All right? Do them. I mean, if you, the scripture says if you plan on getting married, get married. Okay? Uh, do all the things that, that you've, uh, you've got planned that, you know, in fact, you ought to bathe everything you're doing anyway in prayer. Uh, but going about about the things you could go to school, make plans, take that job, go on the vacation, all of these kind of things like that. Because we as the people of God, first, we're supposed to be devotional daily. And so we're uh, we're receiving, we're praying daily. Uh, you know, we're praying without ceasing. So uh, you can still go on that vacation. Glory to God, because he can hear you at your vacation destination, just like you can hear you at your house, okay? Uh, and so uh, do the things that, that, uh, uh, that you need to do, okay? Now, what does this say to all of us as the people of God in light of this? What is it that we're supposed to be doing? Well, two particular things that we, the people of God, are supposed to be doing in times like this, okay? Uh, because we know what time it is. It's really time to wake up and get about God's business. That's what time it is. I say it's time to wake up and get about God's business. It's time to recognize who you are in Christ Jesus. It's time to see the fact that God is with you and for you, to understand that you are more than a conqueror and that God has got his hands on you and that all things are going to work together for your good. It's time to recognize all of that. Glory to God. And it's two particular things that you and I are supposed to do in the midst of these circumstances. Number one, this is a time where you and I are called to prayer. All right? We are called to pray like we hadn't prayed before. I mean, even more. Not that prayer is always serious business, but even more. You get really serious about your times of prayer for your own devotional and well-being, for your mental, emotional, spiritual, you know, well-being, but also uh, that you are part of, of, uh, of, of prayer uh, that's making things happen all over the world. Uh, you're part of the prayers that opens doors and shuts doors. Glory to God. You're part of the prayer that, uh, once again, uh, that directs and, 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 and causes things to be moved and turned and all of these things such as this because we know that prayer changes circumstances. It changes people. You know, uh, it changes minds. Uh, we know all of that. And so that is, that is why we pray, uh, that God takes our prayers and, and uses them to accomplish absolutely tremendous things. You say, why, how does prayer do all of that? Because prayer, uh, once again, touches the spirit world first and then manifests itself in the physical world. And so that's why prayer is so absolutely powerful. And so as the people of God, the thing that you and I are well equipped to do better than anybody else is we are to pray. And so 
even more, if you've not been about your father's business, you know, Jesus told his parents, said, don't you know, I got to be about my father's business. Well, your father's business, one of those things absolutely is a primary case is to pray. And so get real serious about your, your prayer life, okay? For yourself, but for others as well, okay? You ought to be praying about what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, you ought to be praying uh, for Putin, okay? Uh, to be changed and be touched. You ought to be praying that, uh, uh, that people's lives would be saved there. Uh, and other places in the world, there are hot spots in other places. When I tell you not to pray for those things, that's the great thing about it. We can pray for all of these things. Glory to God. While we also pray about our own local problems in Jackson and other places across the United States. So, listen, we've got this powerful tool. What's it called? It's called prayer. The second thing that you and I are supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be sharing the good news. We're supposed to be evangelizing. Okay? We're supposed to be praying, and then the second is what? We're supposed to be evangelizing sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We call it sharing the good news because God's using all of this time to bring the harvest in. Because listen, uh, the world is going to respond in fear. Uh, the world is going to be paranoid. The world is not going to know what to do. The world is going to start understanding how uh, mortal it really is. The world is going to understand once again how how, um, uh, once again, vulnerable they are, how uh, life really is like a bubble on the water. And all of these things that the world has taken for granted, people in the world have taken for granted, they're going to get a revelation that I'm in trouble. Woe is me. Wow, this could happen to me. What, what about this? Where am I going to spend all eternity? Uh, what happens to me if I die? Uh, I don't want to die. Then even more, they need somebody who will share the good news with them. They need somebody who will tell them the plan of salvation. They need to know that Jesus still saves. They need to know Jesus loves them and he wants to bring them under his wings, under his covering. Glory to God. Uh, that, he, that he will take care of them. And he needs people who will share that word with them. And the people that are supposed to share that word are you and I. Hallelujah. And so you and I need to get ourselves in a place where even more, we're not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to salvation to the Jew and to the Gentile, as the scripture says in Romans. Okay. Chapter one, and uh, uh, how beautiful are the feet of those who share glad tidings of of these great things of the good news. Who's that? That's you and I. And so uh, you're to get yourself ready to share your testimony, your personal testimony, what he's done for you, uh, to share with people, even what we're talking about now. Listen, here's what the scripture says in in uh, Matthew chapter 24. All right, uh, you know verse three and following. Uh, I've read down through verse number eight. You can read the rest of the chapter and we'd be good as well. And it keeps on uh, saying those very things. And so you need to share that. You need to share with people, hey, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. How do I give my life to Jesus Christ? You give your life to Jesus Christ by asking him to come into your life. Because Romans uh, 10 clearly says that, okay? Uh, that... Uh, uh, that he will not turn away anyone who calls upon his name, okay? And so we need to share this good news. Tell them, if you'll ask Jesus to come into your life, forgive you of your sins, save you, that's exactly what he will do. And so, uh, you know, as you listen, you're there at work, you're hearing what your co-workers are saying, they're, they're telling their fears and their paranoia, then, hey, tell them, say, hey, can I pray for you about this? Where are you? Do you know Jesus yourself as Savior and Lord? Those are the things that you and I are supposed to do in the midst of this circumstance. Glory to God. And so we change people that are around us, and we also change people 
all around the world. Let me say it again. So that God has given us a tool to change people around us. That's the gospel. Okay? And he's given us a tool to change people all over the world and circumstance all over the world. That's through prayer. Glory to God. Not that we don't preach the gospel all over the world. We do, okay? We, 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 we help other people and we work with folks as they do that all over the world because that's what we're supposed to be doing, especially during these times. And so let's get busy. Let's get about our Father's business. Let's, uh, let's change things. Let's change circumstances. Let's change people. Hallelujah. Let's bring an eternal perspective to bear in the midst of this. Uh, let's help people to know exactly where they would go whenever that day is that they leave the planet, they die. Glory to God. Let's help folks get ready so that whenever that time is. And once, you get, once you're ready, once you've received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, and he's written your name in the Lamb's book of life and the Spirit of God is working in you, then the reality is you're ready. Now, you may not be in a hurry, but you're ready. I'll say it again. We're not in a hurry to leave here, but we're ready so whenever that happens. Wow. And so that we know that uh, whenever that happens, that our Father has prepared a place for us. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. We know we got a place. Nobody has to save a seat for you. You already got one reserved for you. Glory to God. Because you're right in Jesus. Now, this war is going to continue. Okay. It's going to get brutal. It's going to get worse. It's going to be tough to deal with all that is happening, particularly in 2022. You would not think that you would see this kind of brutality out there. And, uh, but it's there. Um, yeah, it's there. And it's going to hurt all of us to see what's going on. And listen, and let me say this to everybody there who only is concerned about their pocketbooks, okay? because you're complaining, you know, and you're talking about the president because of the gas prices are coming up. Can I say to you, listen, get this through your head. The money we're spending is, a, is well spent to ensure that tyranny does not take place in the world. The money, the extra money that we're spending is well spent for us to understand that you're not going to have tyrants like Putin and others who will go into other sovereign countries and, and destroy them and their way of life. If they let Putin get away with what he's doing, he's not going to stop with Ukraine. He's going to go into all those other places because he wants everything that used to be a part of the Soviet Union. And by the way, here's a good little exercise. I would encourage you to get a world map and look at everything around Russia and what used to be a part of the Soviet Union, which are, which are now independent countries. He wants all of that stuff back. Ukraine is just a part of the start of a lot of this. He's got plans to get it all, okay? And then if he does that, you can be sure the Chinese are going to do the same thing. They're going into Taiwan and, you know, Hong Kong and another level and all these other places as well. Uh, tyrants will not stop. And so listen, you and I have to pay the price. That's part of our contribution to ensure that these folks get the message. And so everybody's got to carry their cross to some degree. And a few gallons, a few pennies more, you say a few pennies, Bishop, okay, a few dimes more, a few quarters more. Okay, it's small change comparing to what would happen if you allow these kind of dictators and other tyrants to do whatever they want to do. Because if not, that's a good way to ensure it will come to the American shore, that we'll end up in something affecting us here on our shores. So 
Let's stop being a bunch of complainers and moaners and groaners and let's get busy and be the agents of change, the ambassadors of God that he has called us to do. I hope this has helped you and I pray that you will take this and share this with, uh, with some others, okay? Glory to God. Now, once again, you're going to hear a lot of folks who want to tell you we're in the weeks and, you know, in the half of the week and all those things like that. By the way, anytime you hear any of that, and I know all that stuff too, but listen, it's speculation. Nobody truly knows, okay? It's all speculation, okay? What you can truly know is you can truly know you're saved, and whenever he comes, you're ready, okay? You can know I'm praying like I ought to be praying. I'm sharing the good news of the gospel like I ought to be sharing it. If you do those things, everything else will take care of itself. Wow. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Now, if you're watching me and you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, then the first thing you need to do is give him your life. You can pray this prayer and say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Glory to God. Lord, save me. That's right. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Master, save me. If you say that sincerely, that's exactly what he'll do. He'll come into your life, he'll give you for your sins and save you. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. For whosoever believes in him will not be put to shame. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Make sure you're saved. You're right with him. Well, listen, I appreciate so much each and every one of you being with us tonight. Would you share this with somebody else? Okay. Call some folks, text some folks, email some people. Say, you need to go back and watch this program, this Wednesday night program. Okay. Share it with somebody. Send it to some folks. Okay. Because it's blessed you. Make sure some others hear this. Uh, you know, uh, on your job, when you hear people fearful, say, listen, can I share what my pastor just said? A pastor crew said about this, I think it'll be helpful to you so that we can spread this word and we can stop this fear mongering, we can stop this paranoia and we can help the people of God get about God's business. Remember the announcements that are here at the end of the service and get in on all of these things. Uh, once again, would love it if you uh, uh, want to help us and share with us uh, tithes and offerings as well. Uh, you'll be told how you can do that also. And uh, come see us here at New Horizon. By the way, uh, our cafe uh, for breakfast and lunch is now open as well. And so we're open for breakfast and lunch. Uh, and you can come and, uh, any day and be a part of that as well. At this point, breakfast starts uh, at about 8 o'clock. Uh, and so uh, I know for a lot of folks that's already work, you're already gone, okay? Uh, we'll be going back you know, a few more hours. But right now it starts at 8 o'clock. And so you can come and and get a, some great food, okay, here at New Horizons. So think about that as well. Well, listen, until the next time, saints, do count it all joy. <laughs>